match here at the uh, Millennium Stadium. Leeds Rhinos under the control now of Brian McDermott, ex of Harlequins, Bradford Bulls under the control of Mick Potter, ex of St Helens. It's at the moment going the Bradford Bulls way. They are ahead as we uh, await the start of the second half by 16 points to 10. The Bulls are on the way, so let us get on our way. Back up to the uh, commentary box, and it's uh, Phil Terry and Paul who are alongside uh, Bill Arthur. Well, this is the third time these two have met in Cardiff for the Magic Weekend. Leeds winning previously 42-38 in 2007 through Jordan Tanz's controversial try and then 40-26 in 2008. So this, at the moment, shaping up to be a lot closer. Certainly the Bulls fans hoping so. It's been an encouraging performance from Brett Carney and his teammates early on. Matt Diskin up against his former club been heavily involved for the Bulls and the Rhinos who finished last season empty-handed fourth in the table still got within 80 minutes of grand final but couldn't turn that into silverware that's why Brian McDermott is at the club now to try and turn the tide of course three titles in a row for the Rhinos but Brian McLennan replaced and another Brian Mack in charge be the Bulls to get the second half underway. Steve Ganson, the referee, joins us. Yeah, got you, mate. Yeah. Still okay, to come, Hull FC against Hull Kingston on, Rovers. Their supporters making their way into the ground yeah. now. OK, let's go. And our van gets the second half underway. Here is Burgess, first touch of the ball in the second half for him. One, move. No need to panic for the Rhinos, just uh, the six points separating these two sides now. Two, move. Uh, Kevin go, Sinfield, go. penalty late, right at the end of the first half, cutting the gap still further. Go. Good, good test, good move. test. Yeah, and good work in defence by move. Bradford. They'll need to defend go. strongly in this second half. You know, they. I thought one of the most impressive players in the first half was Jamie Langley, who we did see go off injured as Badira scoots out of that acting out back position. Bradford will need every man available here now to be at their best because I think Leeds will be stronger now in this second quarter. Burrow drills the kick downfield in between Arvan and Brett Carney. It's Arvan who fills it. Let's go down to the sideline for some news from Rod Studd. Well, just one major injury uh, concern to report, Bill, and that's Jamie Langley of the Bradford Bulls. And the bulletin is that they don't think he'll be back this afternoon. That shoulder injury that he got putting the shot on Rob Burrow when Burrow was getting a kick away, so that's the main worry there. No other problems, no injury problems for Leeds. They're looking to get more control, though, out on the field. They're too eager to play, is the message coming out of the change room. They've got to build the platform first. And I did just catch a word with Danny Maguire down on the sideline as well, saying his recovery to that knee injury is going well, and he reckons he'll be back in three and a half months' time, Bill. That's good news for Leeds. And that's six to go. There was a Leeds hand in there as... I think it was Shad Royston tried to get that ball away. So six to go One. for the Bradford Bulls. They got a bit of a breathe the sigh of relief, Bill, didn't they? Wasn't the best of offloads, and they got a fortunate ricochet. Here is Royston now. Royston, a member of the Halifax Championship Grand Final winning side last season in extra time against Featherston Rovers. Snapped up by the Bulls on a one year deal. His white head on a hat trick. Royston in support, he does that so well at championship level. Diskin has got the try he wanted. His heart's desire was to score against his former club. And he's done it, and he caught them cold there. They got a quick play the ball, it was off the back of Elliot Whitehead. And Matt Diskin, trademark try from the former Leeds hooker. 29 years of age now, making his fourth debut, signed on a three-year deal. Oh, he's enjoyed that. Trying to think to suppress the smile. Well, you see, Alima tries to offload the ball, and Callum Watkins it is who knocks it back to his own teammates, but Diskin is the first to pounce on it. And the three players leading up to this try implied to me that Bradford will be a challenger this year. They managed to stretch leads over on the far side of the field. Burrow and Senior were caught. Then they rolled forward with some good, strong runs by Whitehead. And Diskin's vision and awareness took him over the line through the gap. Bradford are back. 50th career try for Matt Diskin. <laughs> what a way to get it. 
against the club where you've played so long, you earned a testimonial. But there is no room for sentiment in this game. Don't you just love it when a player gets what he deserves? Real honest player, Leeds legend, and deserves every little bit of glory he's going to get from scoring that try. Now Patrick Arvan. Bang in front of the posts, adds the extras. And it's a great start to the second half for the Bulls because the Leeds comeback was on. Well, I'm sure Brian McDermott will be very disappointed. He wanted a bit more whack in the defence. But Elliot Whitehead front created havoc for the Leeds defence. And then Pitts, Jay Pitts couldn't get back, he couldn't get set. And then Matt Diskin's vision from dummy half went in to score the try. Jay Pitts playing because Sir Wella Haraki still hasn't got clearance. They're signing from the Crusaders club. Still hasn't got his... Uh, Visa sorted out, they were hoping that something might appear this weekend, but you're talking about the wheels of uh, government and authority, and a weekend, it doesn't happen like that. It's not what it was, you have to really queue up and wait your turn, it's all changed, and it is, it's a, it's, it, it's, it's a nightmare of red tape. Not a happy start to the second half for the Rhinos, penalty conceded here. Well, the referee said the ball wouldn't come out like that naturally. It had to be stolen. I think it was Burgess who is, oh no, Ben Cross who's involved in that tackle. But the kick to touch is a poor one. And the kicks for Bradford have deteriorated as the game's gone on now. It's easy for Ryan Hall to return it back up to the halfway line. Taking his time to settle Ben Cross. Now, in Australia, where he's obviously just come from, where wrestle and contact is everything in defence in their game, he's just got to undo a lot of work that he's been taught over the past four or five years and now get himself Move. to Super League pace Move. and Super League standard. Pitts plays the ball. Ablett finds Senior. Senior has lost it in the tackle. Referee calls the knock-on. Shake of the head from the veteran centre. You know, trying to stop Keith Senior is a difficult task for anybody who faces him on the flank in Super League. Kyle Briggs has done well here today. He's a big, strong player. Who knows where to put himself into the right position, but Briggs there again was strong and brave enough to force the ball free. And an easy turnover of possession for the Rhinos. A poor one. What was it Rob Studd said not too long ago? The message from the Rhinos dressing room at half time from Brian McDermott about a little bit more composure, keeping control of the ball. Okay, good, go. Now that was a better defensive shot from Luke Burgess. Rocks the head of Sibbit. There's Kopchak. Disc in again. Scooting away from the play of the ball and catching Leeds cold there. They just weren't set. They're just playing the ball too quick. The Rook is beating Leeds today in this game. Matt Diskin knows exactly what he's going to do. He's going to get out from dummy half. He knows that the markers aren't set. Matt Diskin nailed Ablett then, didn't he? And Ablett just oh. needed to get out of the way. Oh. Surrender oh. that marker position. You're better off letting them have the 10 yards than give away the penalty. Kopchak, do you think they'd know what he was up to? They played with him long enough. There he is now, Diskin. Here's Scruton, another former Leeds man. Diskin organising things as though he's been in those Bulls colours. Oh, that'll be... Not music to the ears of the Leeds supporters. The way he's marshalling this Bradford attack. Here he goes again, Diskin. Kopjack. Four. Move. Back it up. Hold. Diskin. Carney now. Little kick through. They're trying the kick again. Webb has fielded that. Oh, don't do that. Do that instead. What do you know, Bill? The 12 point the lead in Rub League. The cheek of him. The 12 point lead in Rub League is, a, is an interesting balance, isn't it? There's too much daylight between teams, and Bradford know they need to extend that plus, plus two scores, converted scores. But a good work by Brent Webb to position himself first to take the ball and then get back out into the field of play. It's a good recovery from the Rhinos fullback. Oh, but again, just things not clicking perfectly for them. And they very often don't do in the first game of the season, but they're clicking more for the Bulls than they are for the Rhinos. Tell you what, the uh, Bradford Bulls physio was a very lucky man. He nearly got wiped out then, coming onto the field behind the play and running across the Leeds line. 
Hold, hold, oh, look at hold. that now, fifth tackle. They've only managed to gain 26 metres. Big boot from Sinfield, but it's into the arms of Carney, and Carney turns. He's got Patrick Arvan alongside him. Senior meets him. One, move. Two, Suspicion of a high shot move. from the Bulls supporters hold. on their man. Well, although we saw Brett Carney named as the... Uh, the uh, Standoff in the side. He has tended to play most of this game as fullback, really, and probably the Bulls and Mick Potter see him as the the danger really in turning the ball. It started to set well, and they've got some space here now with Chev Walker. Walker back in the game after that horrendous leg break he suffered playing for Hull Kingston Rovers at Leeds in 2009. It took some recovering from did that injury. Now he's here at the Bulls and hoping he can get things back on track. He's got some ground to make up as Chev Walker. Briggs hoists that one out wide. Patrick Alvan will challenge for it, bats it back. Platts chasing it, but the referee says it went forwards. That'll be the turnover. Well, you know what? It's almost a good 10-minute period here to start the second half for Bradford. They did seem to fatigue in the first period. As we approached half time, they looked a little flat, but they've started One, strongly again. Move. Potter's oh. side here, taking the game oh. and they're putting their opponents under pressure, which they must continue here now for the next 30 minutes. Those oh. gaps they found, Phil, the Bradford Bulls against Leeds early on when Brett Delady was off the field, oh. down to 12. Move. They're just not there at the minute, oh. are they? That's uh, extra invention you've got to have now, an extra skill to break a oh. side oh. down oh. as good as Leeds. That's where I think they're trying to be a little bit patient Please, and go to the kick. Copjack batting that ball down, conceding the uh, feed at the scrum there. You know, it was a high-risk offload, isn't it, by Kevin Sinfield? Copjack puts his hand to it. Well, the Bulls won only one of their last 14 League and Cup games last season. Really was a wretched end to the campaign, but starting very positively here, leading Leeds by 22 points to 10. Leeds. As we've mentioned, this 100% record in forward. Magic Weekends. But that is under threat here. Senior. Move! Well. Royston it was with the tackle. Royston involved again. Play it. play it, says the referee. He was happy with that. Cross puts his shoulder in. Move. And I thought that was great defence from Royston. Originally, he was offside, he backed off the 10 metres. Goodness me, kiss of death. Backed off the 10 metres, got himself onside, made the tackle, and Steve Ganson allowed play to go onwards. Then conceded that one. So Leeds now have the opportunity to test the Bulls defence. Burrow going across the field and then gives Senior the ball and two Bulls defenders at the same time. Here's Webb now, Sinfield. Wasn't a great movement around Simfield then, nobody... No, there's not as much push, but you, you're right. Here is Ablett. Again, Ablett. Ablett on his own. Right underneath those posts, Baderas. Burrow now, short pass from Burrow. Good defence from the Bulls once more, play on, says the referee, and they do. Well, uh, Elliot Whitehead's shown again here today, just what a great play he's going to be for the rest of his career and for the rest of this season. Leeds can see the penalty here. I know what he did. Keith back slammed into the floor. And all the pressure's taken off Bradford. The, the offload attempt there by Jay Pitts comes free and ends up in the arms of Elliot Whitehead. He skips inside Ryan Hall, but eventually held and illegally Hold. by the referee. Hold! Go. Says his hand stuck. Clear message from Steve Ganson. One. Don't let it be. Move. Get your arm out of there. Hold! You lost Stop. the collision, don't lie on, and don't get involved. Careful! Kylie Luluai come, coming herring in Move. there to make the tackle. And good lads, good lead. Just bounced off. Third. Grin Hargreaves Move. it was. On the Hargreaves following Mick Potter here from St Helens. Here is Briggs now, Chev Walker now. Walker bumps off Watkins, bumps off a second, gets the pass away. Ian Sibbett now. Four, Four tackles oh. gone. Briggs, Chev Walker again, don't sell me, another Leeds former player is going to score against the club today. We've seen Matt Diskin do that already. Here is Diskin. Carney, crossfield kick on the last. 
They're in for the, the try potentially from Whitehead, or are they? They are! He's got his hat-trick from a kick again. Whitehead celebrates. Leeds completely dumbfounded by that, but they were ball-watching. Elliot Whitehead wasn't. And the kick from Carney hung up there. Leeds just look incredulous at the moment as Whitehead gets the plaudits of his teammates. Well, they're playing well, he is. Another dangerous kick we've talked about, putting your opponents under pressure when the kick goes in the air. They've done that here. The communication wasn't right between the Rhinos and Elliot Whitehead, much as Harrison Hampton did for Wigan, just put himself into the position to take advantage of the ball. It bounced in his favour, and he didn't take long to get over the try line. What a happy return here now. Another kick which is poorly held with. Ryan Hall thinks it's too far in field. You know what? A lot of kicks go to wingers. This one went to no man's land. But it landed in the land of, and the arms of uh, Elliot Whitehead. And we now go to, most importantly, past the 12 point lead. This is 16. It can become 18 if this kick is converted. And a lot of pressure now rests on the shoulders of those Leeds Rhinos to come back from this position. Whitehead, uh, Bulls fan all his life. He used to watch them standing on the terracing at Oddsall. Played for the West Bowling Amateur Club. Time back on. In the uh, Bradford area. And what a day he's having. Patrick Arvan's not having a bad day either. He's converted that one nonchalantly. Nothing nonchalant about this Bulls performance. 28 points to 10, they lead. Well, that try just come down to who wanted it more, and it was obviously Elliot Whitehead. There was four Leeds players that were stood around, waiting to see who was going to get the ball, who was going to jump for the ball, and there was only one man who was going to get that ball, and that was Elliot Whitehead. You mentioned the fact that he's a trained electrician. I should imagine there's fuses blowing in the uh, Leeds Rhinos coaching department at the moment. Are you after a free job, though, and you've mentioned that twice now. Well, as you mentioned it, there is actually a bit of a problem we've got. Well, as how good was it to see Chev Walker so involved in that set? Been out the game with a horrific injury. Awful, awful snap. And he's back what looks like to somewhere near his best. And he's going to get more confident and better as the season goes on. But Deere is penalised. Well, he's penalised him for having his second effort, trying to turn him over. As Paul said before, they're losing the tackle, they're losing the contact. And Bradford seemed to be offloading this ball at will. Paul, lads, hold. Here is Bryn Hargreaves. Surrender! Stand one! Carney, Sibbett. Two! Man. From the struggles at Salford Hold. last season for Ian Sibbett to what could be a very good start to the season from the Bradford Bulls. Rayner was looking over his shoulder for Walker there. Here goes Heath Lestrange now. A strange Lestrange darting run from him. They've got Lestrange. And Diskin out there. Five, Could cause mayhem. Five. On the last, here is Lestrange. Carney again yeah. hoisting that ball. This time Leeds surely are alert to it. They could be in for another try. Oh, Van has pounced on that loose ball. Has he got his second? It's a video Jackie ref decision. On. on the onside, obviously. Richard Silverwood, the man who'll be looking at that one. Onside, the first call. Well, they aim to land this ball on top of the shortest player in the lead side, and I think it's well done if that's the intention, because it comes down exactly where Rob Burrow stood in the defensive line. Players around him looking up high. Elliot Whitehead gets above him again now, whose hands touch this ball. We also see Michael Platt coming in. Well, it's a very difficult decision that the video referee has to make. On one inspection, I'd say that some part of Elliot Whitehead's hands touch this. There are a lot of hands in the air, you can, you can be the judge to pick them, but I think this is a knock-on. I'm, I'm with you, Phil, I think it comes off his left hand as he goes up for the ball. Right hand. No. And right left hand to left. left. Right to left. I think it's both of them. <laughs> I think it's a knock-on. Take one more view and then I think you've got to make a decision after this. I'll tell you what, Rob Borough will do well if he outjumps Elliot Wisehead. Well, Diego Maradona out jumped Peter Shilton, so it's got a chance. And, you know, you've got to give Rob Burrow credit there, because he stood flat-footed, he's got to jump in the air as high as he can. The Bradford players are running onto the ball, it's a lot easier to get height there. 
You mentioned it before, Terry, from a coaching perspective. Now, you take what comes, because the attacking team are in the air, challenging. Little Rob Burrow, he must be six foot off the floor. He can't do any more, can he? Richard Silwood still taking a look at this, but Leeds ready for is a restart giving, on the 20. Is he going to give the benefit of the doubt to the attacking side? That's, that's one interpretation. I don't think so. I think Patrick Arvan will be denied a second try here in Cardiff. And Leeds will really breathe a sigh of relief. It's the handover, though, not what they were hoping for, a tap 20. Yeah, and over, mate. Are you looking for Back a game breaker now? I think set. Leeds. I know that's a long, a long Ball time left to play, but they are 18 points behind. Who can make a difference? What's your point of difference, and what can you bring to this game here now to turn it on its head? Brent Webb. Who's got something that can really just step out the norm? Two. Someone who's going to step, show Nine. and go, come up with something. Oh. Oh. There are a number of players. Brent Webb springs straight to mind for me, Nine. but not with defence like that. Hold. Hold. Whitehead it was, came in and uh, cut down. The Leeds player. Oh, it's Jay Pitts, I think, who, and Pitts is still oh, feeling God. that. He's down Mays. in back play. It was a, I think it was a legitimate oh, tackle, and Pitts is struggling to continue as play continues. Last move! It's the fifth tackle. They're only on their own 40-metre oh, line as right. Sinfield drills the ball downfield, but he was under pressure as he went to put that kick in. Now, here is Gareth Rayner, another player looking to rebuild his career. The then there's a penalty conceded for a shove off the ball, and I think it was Diskin. Well, this is your potential game-changing moment. Matt Diskin's run a player off the ball here. Look, shoulder charge Jamie Jones Buchanan to create some space for Rayner. The referee spotted it, and Lees are alive. And Leeds now have to accommodate a change of tactics. Pitts has gone off the field. We've already seen Callum Watkins on at right centre, which means the man that was on the bench, the centre, Brett Delaney, the guy who was in the sim bin and cost Leeds so badly, he's now playing in the second row. Here's Laetiti, faced by Chev Walker. Walker gets a hold of him, Laetiti gets the ball away to Watkins. Watkins loses it, goes backwards, says the referee. Third! Move! Jones Bishop plays the ball, Sinfield, oh, but Kylie Lulawai couldn't take it, he was ahead yeah. of the pass, really, was uh, Kylie Lulawai. And, and a chance think, goes begging. I do think, Bill, it was meant for Brent Webb. Move! Hold! Ten metres away from the post. Move! Two! So, a let-off there for the Bulls. That penalty from Diskin could have been costly. That could be costly, Knock but they the couldn't get a hold of it. The offload Come on, Kevin's very nearly on. came up Scrum in the hands of Sinfield, everything. but Sinfield and Lulawai, I think, got in Down each other's way there. The Just keep going back and Both going line. for it. Okay. Well, Kevin Sinfield, as soon as he sees he gets his arm free, he knows that he's going to offload that ball, so okay. he has to stay alert, but unfortunately for Leeds, he knocks okay. the ball forward. Not the best play I've ever seen from the Bulls captain Andy Lynch, who was a compulsive, prolific offloader. He has reined that in in his game. He was actually the top offloader in the competition last season, so he likes an offload, doesn't he, Just? And it's usually compulsive. Has to do it, throws it on the floor virtually every time. That was what he should have kept hold of. He's the man of the match, or one of them for the Bulls, certainly in terms of tries scored. Elliot Whitehead, a hat trick for him. The Bulls coming up to the last quarter of the game. 28-10 ahead. Hargreaves, Briggs with a little kick ahead. Walker trying it again. It's ricocheting everywhere, and it's going to come up for Walker, and he might yet get the try he desired. Disallowed in the first half. Steve Ganson will go to the video ref surely, but maybe there wasn't a lot Should wrong with that. On, uh, Perhaps a suspicion of a knock-on. Well, everything that Bradford have done this afternoon is so much sharper, crisper than what they did last season. Here, this play, look, the ball comes from Hargreaves, it's a nice pass backwards. The kick goes through, dropped off the floor now, that comes off a Leeds player, there's no doubt there. So that's the play on to this stage. Sheb Walker kicks it off, and it goes into the midriff of Ben Jones Bishop. Now, at that point, I think it's kicked backwards first by a Leeds player, or not backwards by Lauatiti. Here's the initial kick. 
ricochets off Sinfield into the arms of Walker. Now it's going backwards. Now, does a Bradford player touch the hostage? I think not. It's off the left foot. Roll it on here. Now, does it hit his arm? His left arm, perhaps. Could say if you go back at that frame that it touches the left forearm of Chev Walker. He's back off Jones Bishop. And then at that point, it's the left elbow of Chev Walker. I think that's a damning clip, Phil, isn't it? Although he doesn't deliberately play the ball, he still affects the movement of it. And to be honest, that was much harder for Chev Walker to try and kick that ball than pass Massive. it to his winder, winger, who had no, which is Gareth Rayner, and he had nobody in front of him. It's not a try for mine. Well, there's no doubt, is that the white ball hits his arm, the see the... Do you know, for sheer devilment, I'm going to go against both of you here. I don't think he's looking at the ball, he's looking straight over the top of Jones Bishop, thinking he's kicked the ball forward. I think Bishop then kicks the ball uh, backwards. Does he have to look at it? He's touched his arm, he's knocked it forward, the knock on. He's adversely affected the movement of the ball and he's knocked it on in a forward motion. Does it even hit his arm? Uh, yeah, I think Terry's right. Arm. Do you know what? He doesn't deserve a try because he should have passed it. <laughs> Gareth Rayner should have been scorching round under the sticks as we're watching this. Is this the fourth or fifth time we've seen this angle? I think the video referee has to make a decision. You, you can see the ball touches his arm there. It's quite clear for me. Can, can we make moral decisions? Don't give it him because he should have passed. Richard Silverwood, has he come to a conclusion after multiple viewings of that incident? Chev Walker hopes it's in his favour. It's about here, I think, you know. About on the 20th. But he could be disappointed here. Come on, Chev Walker's arm. No, but he, but he's wiped that out because he should have passed. Stand on, I'll call time off. Hasn't had a great deal of good fortune on this ground, Chev Walker. He lost in two cup finals here with the Rhinos, in fact, in 2003 against the Bulls. And then in 2005 against Jerry's Hull, really come off your arm, and he's been unlucky twice today. Two tries disallowed for the former Leeds man. Okay. That one, the narrowest of margins. Okay, Rob. Yeah. Out. Sinfield, Webb now they need some spark leads. They need a burst of creativity Woo! from somebody. Go. But there was a suggestion in uh, the Leeds camp ahead of the Two. season that maybe Bruce. one of the reasons for their downfall oh. last year was too much go, go. individuality, too many players looking to teammates to come up with something and not enough Third. pulling Bruce. together. Oh. One Whatever it takes is, now. One of the difficulties they face in this final quarter is a strong defensive effort from Bradford. You know, Bruce. the humiliation and embarrassment that they go. suffered last year as a club really has motivated them to defend strongly and an attempted interception. Not on Leeds ball. Again, by Elliot Whitehead. They can't find a way to break through Bradford down the middle of the field and they're managing to cover the gaps out wide. Still a goodly portion of the game to go into the last quarter. And if Leeds get on a roll, they can do some damage. I think, I think the market defence from Bradford this afternoon has been absolutely fantastic. They've slowed down Leeds. Okay. They've won, they okay. seem to be winning the tackles, they're getting numbers in. And Leeds can't seem to be getting any um, go forward. Always looking to play outside of Bradford. Rayner gets a hand in there. He'll kick it ahead, referee is going to bring it back. You just have this feeling, don't you, that it's just all too flash with Leeds. Flick passes, face balls, taking gambles that are just not on. Is it just for that miracle play? It, it looks and it feels that way. We can't, you know, we can't guarantee and say that, because we're not in the camp. OK, lock in, lads. You're looking at lock improvements. In. Goodness me, what on earth has Elliot Whitehead done? He's, oh. he's, he's, he's grown. Oh, nice play. Sorry to interrupt you there, Paul, but a nice bit of creation oh, and man. invention there by the oh. scrum breaking and Cal oh. going straight down the middle. Go. Got some trick players. They just need a 4.1. Synchronised scrummaging Two. from the Move. Leeds Rhinos there, and it's made good Down progress the for them. But okay, is now. Good. Here Bye. is Sinfield. Operating in that standoff role. 
10 metres line. Sinfield is taken to ground eventually. Madeiras, Borrow, Webb Senior has gone without it. He says to the referee that there was a ball's hand in there, and he's right. I think the touch judge intervened. Is there not a first knock on from Keith Senior? We'll get to see it again here. Pass from Webb, Kyle Briggs. Well, they must turn with his hand. Briggs okay, hadn't touched on, it. That on. would have been the first knock on then from okay, Bradford, perhaps. Okay. So it's a great opportunity for Leeds now. Watkins onto that Move. ball from Sinfield, but well tackled he was. Off goes Badiris. Elmer in there to make the tackle with his Bulls Two. teammates. They're right in the shadow of those posts. Off the line quickly was Walker, over the top. Jones Bishop gets his second try of the game to give the Rhinos hope in front of their own supporters. Unselfish it was as well from Callum Watkins, because he could have tried his arm there, but he popped it over the top, and Ben Jones okay, Bishop yeah, returning to the club after that spell in London, making an impact. And Leeds, well, maybe that's what they needed. Maybe they can kick on now. Well, a scum position was created. They were stretched on the right-hand side, Bradford, in their defence. And then eventually they came over to the left, and the left-hand side outnumbered her. Gareth Rayner couldn't prevent the try. But interestingly, the Leeds tries have all been scored out wide on the left and right wings, which have made this kick very difficult indeed. A significant one if Sinfield can land it. Losing his footing on the surface here, one or two players just saying that it is a bit tricky. But Leeds sending a comeback, the trail 28-10 to Wakefield last year in Edinburgh in the uh, Millennium Series. They came back and won that one, but they haven't got as much time to play with here. Thought process now from the Bradford Bulls. Do we complete? Nail it. Don't push the ball past two players. Work from the rook. Make sure you've got a completion work a good constructive kicking game and just okay, keep hold it, of this ready. match or do you just try, try and keep passing keep pushing keep playing because the rhinos can come back and get you from anywhere what the bulls need to keep their calm keep their composure they can do paul but i i think as they give a penalty away i think they play exactly how they have done for the first 63 minutes 64 minutes of this game here it is again just too long kylie lulawai feet at the line he gets through he pokes his nose through Titi plays the ball, Burgess now running hard, Two. the ball's defending Man. hard. No. Badiris, what a pressure on Badiris' shoulders now with Diskin in the ball's colours. He can play 80 minutes and he's an absolute class act, Danny Badiris. Burrow, Webb. Move. Four. Whitehead with the tackle, the, the Bulls have got to play a down in back play, it's Platt. They carry on, the ball is loose, who got a hand to that? Oh, it's a busy afternoon for Richard Silverwood. Leeds are celebrating. Kylie Lulawai might have claimed a rare try there. Well, we've only had one look and we're a long way away, but I thought Brett Carney saved this. I think it's a try-saving play to ground the ball in his own in goal area. We've seen how dangerous Leeds can be here with some quick play of the balls. There are occasions when both markers are still lying on the floor and Leeds are off and running. The kick goes to then as the ball goes over the line is it the right hand or left hand of well we need a few more views of this he throws the ball in hope and speculation it's then kicked on by brent webb and kyla lulawai and carney have to contest here now to get to the ball first in the angola area it's certainly grounded we just don't know by whose hand is that lulawai's left hand phil he's got a wrist strap on left strap has it no that's on his right the, you've got a goal does. leads. I got a goal leads there. It's his left hand, isn't it? It is his left hand there. You can see yep. it because Khan is a two still up in the air. Six inches before him. He's on it first. And this is six more points. Well, well Kevin Simfield thinks he does. He's already got the ball on the tee, waiting to go. Kali Luluai got a rare try here in 2008 in the win against the Bulls. He's got another one, and it could be a crucial one. Hold on, man. And Sinfield, as they said, has already lined up to convert Lulawai's try. Okay. 
Sinfield hasn't had the best day of uh, kicking for him, but he's got that one bang on target. And it's now Leeds 20, the Bulls 28. Terry were chatting previously about a change of tactics. Look at, look at Leeds, Rob Burrow, so quick from the play of the ball. We're saying about the change of tactics. The Bradford Bulls haven't had a chance to change tactics. They've not seen the ball now for four or five minutes, and they really are now under the pump. Speed in and around the rope, that's what caused these problems, and it was Rob Burrow's initial run. But you've got to find something from within to get yourself back into a game, and that's exactly what Leeds have done. Kylie Lulawai had that extra effort, that extra push to score that try. Jones Bishop is underneath that restart, and here is Luke Burgess. Now then, can the Bulls keep their nerve? 15 minutes to go. One! And it's 15 minutes, Bill, which with a, I don't think Jamie Langley nor even perhaps Michael Platt will feature for Bradford. They are running Two, out of healthy and fit nine. bodies. Laotiti now and was looking for an offload there. Callum Watkins was hoping it would come his way. Burrow, Jamie Jones Buchanan. On the 40 metre line, the Leeds Rhinos building up ahead of steam now. Here is Burrow. Diskin wrestled his former colleague to the ground. Lynch is there as well. Fifth tackle there, needs to be a good kick to keep the squeeze on. It is a good one from Sinfield, it's a great kick. I think Bradford will be relieved that it's gone over the sideline here now. They're able to regather their composure, walk to the scrum. Just stops the momentum of the game slightly, which was all in the favour of the Leeds Rhinos. And you know, Phil, it plays on your mind when you're on the park and you, you're there and you're playing. When a team has that much enthusiasm to run to form the scrum, you think these lads are up for it. We have got a big 15 minutes left. The last 15 minutes, we have got to switch on and defend. Out. Bulls. One. Some of the Move. wind taken out of their sails now. They dominated the uh, start of this second half. Well, the biggest, are they running out of steam? The biggest danger for Bradford is if they start to think about the clock, then they really are in trouble. If they continue to play the way they've played and done the right things, then they've got every chance of winning this match. Got to play the set. Are they thinking about running these last couple of options at the back end of the set now, or are they going to kick it? Do they want the ball out of play so they can slow it down and walk to the scrum? Or are they going to take the chance on kicking the ball anywhere near one of the best attacking players in the world, and that's Brent Webb? Lynch ships it on to Diskin. That's the fifth tackle just inside their own half for the Bradford Bulls, who lead here in Cardiff. 28 points to 10, as Briggs puts a good kick in as well. Walker is chasing that one. Webb is going to have to field it. Royston is arriving. And look at Webb's footwork, leaving three of them for dead there. Lost it. It's back to six, in fact, says the referee. Did he steal it? Did he get the ball back? Well, he had five me. men putting him under pressure, trapping him in the corner, and he danced his way out of danger. Carl Briggs stole it and then probably regathered possession. Two. Two. You know, the Bradford Bulls didn't do an awful lot wrong on that. Great completion, beautiful kick, five-man chase, and they're now still going backwards with the uh, Lee Rhinos in full flow. Borrow sells the dummy and goes. He's got senior in support. He won't need him. Little Rob Burrow has taken a bit of a hammer today, but he's had the perfect answer to it. And Leeds are coming back. The Rhinos fans, who were on the edge of their seats earlier on, and looking on anxiously at the threat to their 100% Millennium Magic record, are seeing Leeds coming roaring back here. Well, Bradford have had their hearts broken in this stadium before against their arch rivals, and it looks like it might be about to happen again here. The pace with which Leeds can just burst into life. One of the players, the number one, got them out of trouble in one corner of the field, and the other little guy, Rob Burrow, scored in the far diagonal one. Simfield on target with that one. Now, just two points in it. Leeds 26. Bradford 28, the Bulls at one point 28-10 ahead, but a rush of points from the Rhinos has turned things round here, well, almost turned things round, 
And this is Leeds. It's all about the speed. They're not overplaying the players like they were in the opening 20 minutes of this game. They're winning the rook, they're getting up, they're playing the ball as quick as they can. And when that man Rob Burrow gets hold of the ball, look at the speed, look at the determination in his face. He's got Leeds back into the game, and Bradford must be starting to panic now. Can they keep the lead? Can they go on and get the result, Bradford? Oof, it's going to be tough against this Leeds side, Phil. The big talking point has to be the Brent Webb in the corner when he lost possession and regathered it. We'll get to look at that again, perhaps after the match. That was a huge moment in this game. Well, Rob Burrow is nearing a thousand points in his career and he's actually got a, a testimonial starting later this year well-earned testimonial as well and that's the sort of performance that'll have uh, the Leeds fans rushing to support his not that they wouldn't support his testimonial in the first place because he's been a, a great servant to the club now then the Bulls as Phil was saying, their hearts broken on this ground before, not least in, in 2007, in that 42-38 win. Five, move. No. Here is Burrow, drills the kick downfield. Real test of, of character now for the, for the Bradford Bulls. But look at the chase, it's all about keeping your nerve now. Nine minutes left in this game, and you've got to say it's Leeds at the minute who will seem to be playing on the front foot. Tackle two completed, just behind the scenes now, you can see with the Bradford Bulls, there's the third play, they're trying to work out, goodness me, that was a lifesaver. They're just trying to work out then, on the third, the fourth, how are we going to kick, who's going to kick, do we want the ball out of play, or were we going to give it back to Brent Webb and let him possibly do what he's done on the last set? Kylie Lulawai penalised there for just clinging on to Shad Royston a bit longer. Scruton now. Move! Hold! The Bradford still have an attacking mindset that we'll see in this set, set of six tackles that Lestrange takes it to line. Was that a penalty? Time! Move! Here is Diskin now. Carney. On, on, Olivia Five. Elmer. Move! French international Hold. captain Elmer. They've gone to the kick on many occasions now once they've had this field position. Move. Are they going to gamble putting oh. the ball up in the air? Because possibly this time the Rhinos might come down with it. Briggs finds Scruton. Scruton does well to bounce off Lulawai there. Five. That is the fifth Move. tackle. Bang in front of the post now. It'll be with Carney. Carney, grab a kick through. And they're going to get the ball back, I think, of the Bradford Bulls. They've done well to pin Brent Webb inside his own in-goal area. Really smart play from the Bradford Bulls. Ball wasn't in the air. It's either got to be on the floor or it's got to be right over the top. You don't want anything at midriff that can be caught and caught easily. I thought that was really, really smart from Bradford. It was important for the Bulls that they stopped the bleeding. They've had possession at the centre of the field. It's a short kickoff from Kevin Sinfield. Who's it gone forward from? The referee says play on. They've got it back. We saw the Crusaders come up with something like that in their game. Clinton Shivkovsky and it paid off and it's come up for Ryan Hall there. Well, Leeds obviously know the two points behind the clocks against them. They need to get the ball back as quickly as they can. And that's good play. Sinfield just stumbled at the crucial moment there as he was thinking of moving that ball on. And as a coach now, you want your players to be nothing more than honest. Jamie Good Jones collision. Buchanan on the burst. Five. Let the tackle go, you've lost the contact. Get out the way, do not concede. Sinfield now thumps that ball into the air. Maybe got a bit but too much distance on it, but it's wrong-footed Carney. It's ricocheted off the post. And oh. by the skin of his teeth, Brett Five. Carney has got that ball round his knees. Not sure if that is physically possible, but he did it. I don't think. I think this is going to be a very, very tough ask now. It's going to be a tough six minutes for Bradford. All the outside backs coming in, trying to help the forwards out. They know that they've done an awful lot of hard work. But surely they've got some experienced campaigners out there, the Bulls. It's not as though they're all rookies and green. No, absolutely, and you, you hit it right on the head then, Terry. It was backs away set, wingers, full-back centres, massive carry previously from Sheb Walker. 
just giving the big men a little bit of a breather so they can get to the ball on play four and five. Brent Webb running the ball back. A roar goes up from the Rhino supporters when they see him in possession. Here is Ben Jones Bishop. Two tries to his name. Elliot Whitehead has got a hat trick for the Bulls already. Jones Bishop with two. His cross. Briggs and Sibbit with the tackle as Badiris takes it on. Jones Bishop and Walker flattens him with a good tackle. Four tackles gone. Sinfield, Burrow now. Burrow, Scruton just gets a hold of him. Quick play the ball on the last. Webb chips the kick over the top. Patrick Alvan has to turn. Fields the ball and for a moment thought about giving it to Brett Carney. But clings on. Into the last five minutes here, the ball's clinging on. No, you're looking for volunteers, aren't you? Who's behind the ball? Who's going to carry? Well, whether it's a speed set, whether it's your forward who get in, just simple players off the rook, just kick it as far as you can up the pitch. Bradford have only won one of the last eight games against the Rhinos since 2007. They did have that 20-all draw at Headingley last season. Touch, 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 touch is on, though. Was that for a grapple tackle in the previous tackle? I would imagine Bradford are going to be awarded a penalty. Firstly, they're awarded Thank some you. oxygen. Uh, Luke Burgess. The clock Luke Burgess! Stops. Luke! Grapple tackle! It's a grapple tackle. That is Reporting. a lifeline for the Bulls, isn't it? Where we are, yeah? Yeah. Four minutes what? to go. Well, there it is. It's a killer yeah. as well for Brian McDermott yeah, yeah, and Leeds. Had them in good position, exactly where they wanted them. They wanted to defend down this area of the park. All of a sudden, okay. they give the penalty away, relieving penalty. Do you know what, Terry? There's a fantastic clip yesterday in the Wigan Saints game. Uh, young Farrell, Liam Farrell, had his arm oh, around someone's neck, oh, just oh, about to bend oh. him over backward, then let go, dropped the arm around the body and got away Come with it. On. It can be done. Move! Hold! Go. The Bulls, without an opening day win since 2007. Two, Just about move. three minutes away from it now. And against Leeds, of all people. Move. But it's going to be a nerve-jangling final oh, three minutes for these Bulls supporters. And Leeds just want to get their hands on the ball again. Oh, Elema has go. lost it. They will get their hands on the ball now. And Webb has picked it up. Zero. Move. And they continue oh. to pass and play. Put them under pressure, and Keith Senior, you know what? 75 meters from the try line that he has to get to. He or his teammates have probably got what 10 more players left, I think, in this three minutes. And in those 10 players, somebody's got to get over the line. Leeds conditioner Jason Davidson comes herring onto the field. Instructions going out there as Delaney takes it. Damian Gibson, I beg your pardon, who's out there. Looking very fit, so too is Jones Bishop. Jones Bishop, his moment for glory. Chip ahead, Rayner is chasing him. Did Rayner take him down? Is it a penalty try? The referee has asked for the video ref to take a look at that. What oh, drama here, team, drama as we had in 2007. 2007. You know, I don't think yeah, it can be got. awarded as a penalty try because the Bradford Bulls have players chasing back in the end goal. You can't really say whether they would have got to the ball or not. Brilliant play from Jones Bishop. Just look at the footwork. He's taken down almost simultaneously, but look, in the background now, just coming around the back of Steve Ganson, going back to an, an attempted pick-up. He's gone to the foot. I, I think you could award a penalty try, but I wouldn't. I do think this is a legitimate ta challenge. Look by at all Gareth the Renner. Bradford Bulls players I chasing behind the back Patrick of Steve Ganson. Man's more than 50 metres away at that point there. Uh. But well, what do you got to that? There's, there's the well, question, that's Phil. The decision that's the, the decision. Ref, isn't and it? I think when someone's in the frame, that then takes that decision away. Looking at it in slow motion, looks worse for Gareth Rayner. It's brilliant play by Leeds to go down this side. Watkins and Ben Jones Bishop have shown just how they're going to excite this season. But can they send their fans home from Cardiff with a real smile on their face? Could that be classed as a simultaneous what? contact from, from, I, from Rayner? I, this. I, I think it is. I wouldn't award a penalty. I would award a goal line dropout. Well, it's not up to us. It's up to video ref Richard Silverwood. Crucial decision here. And it's a decision in the favour of the Leeds Rhinos. It's a shocker.
for the Bradford Bulls. For Gareth Rayner. And it's a try for the Rhinos that will win them the game. Ben Jones Bishop gets the hat trick. Well, the third being the penalty try, but what a way for the Bulls to lose it. But what about the centre player from Callum Watkins? I've said he really does have the world at his feet. And then the man who puts the ball to his foot ends up being awarded with a penalty try. These two on the right hand side are so hot. 2007, Leeds won it at the death with that kick that ricocheted off the post and Jordan Tanzi followed up. The Bulls were hurt by that. They're hurting again now. Sinfield from bang in front of the post claims the extra points. Jones Bishop claims the hat trick and Leeds look as though they're going to claim the victory as well. Penalty timer is being Lewis chucking And heartbreak it is for the Bradford Bulls. Their wait for an opening day win will go on unless they can come up with something at the death here now. I think they're going to go short for big Olivia element. Kevin Sinfield spotted it. They're all moving around the Leeds players. Be surprised if a right footed kicker attempts to kick it to that side of the field. Or... Jones Bishop, the tallest probably the of the position. Leeds players, okay. has moved into the danger area to contest that ball, which has only just gone 10. It's going to come up for One. Leeds, it is. That's the game, surely. Hold, hold, into the last hold, minute hold. now. Somebody's going to have to come with something special for the Bulls that have come up with a big Move. hit there. Hold, what a fantastic hold. last 20 minutes for this Leeds side. They knew exactly what they had to do. And some people Move. out there are saying hold. it's a transition year for Leeds. I think that's an absolute load of rubbish. Brian McDermott's come. He's brought a work hold. ethic to this side. It's Move. littered with stars, and I think it's in for a big year hold. from this Leeds Rhino side. What a test of character this has been for this lead side. And there's the penalty, the high tackle. Contact with the head. Scruton. Careful. Heath Lestrange, Elliot Whitehead, all in there. It was uh, Scruton, the most enthusiastic of them. So okay. the penalty goes Leeds Rhino's way. The win goes Leeds Time Rhino's off, way. On. Their 100% record in this Millennium Magic competition or the Magic Weekend <laughs> competition stays alive, but only just... Looking down the barrel at one point, but they have chipped their way back. Hold. And courtesy of that Hold. late penalty try, Hold. they're going to go away with the win. Hold. The clock counting down. Whoa. The Bradford so close. Move. And the Bulls players cannot believe what has happened. Leeds have got out of jail. And Ben Jones Bishop, the young man who's back at the Rhinos after his year at Harlequins, has helped them snatch this game. With 22 points in the last quarter, Brian McDermott's team have won it against the odds. But if nothing else, the Bradford Bulls have indicated that they are back and could be a force in Super League this season. Matt Diskin enjoying his Super League debut for the Bulls against his former club. Patrick Arvan among the try scorers as well. But it's Leeds who've got the win.